The first two weeks of February was defined by a sequence of storms separated by intervals of two to three days that saw strong winds and huge waves which made conditions extremely dangerous around exposed coastlines, particularly in the south and west. The South West Main Line Railway was severely damaged at Dawlish, Devon, during the storm of 4th to 5th February. There were major flooding problems, with the Somerset levels continuing to be inundated with floodwaters and severe flooding also occurred along sections of the River Thames. The standard meteorological winter season spans the period from 1st December to the end of February, so how will this winter be remembered? The period from mid-December 2013 to mid-February 2014 saw at least 12 major winter storms and was the stormiest period of winter weather the UK has experienced for many years. For the winter overall, new rainfall records have been set for the UK, Scotland, Wales and southern England, with some areas receiving well over twice their normal winter rainfall. It has also been the wettest winter in the long-running England and Wales Precipitation Series, which has records as far back as 1766. There was a predominance of west and southwesterly winds this winter, associated with the unsettled and at times stormy conditions. So not surprisingly, it was also a notably mild winter, and at 5.2 degrees Celsius was 1.5 degrees above the average. Despite the excessive rainfall, most of England also saw more sun than usual this winter, in contrast to some western and northern areas that were rather dull. Now let's look at the statistics for February as a whole. The provisional mean temperature was 5.2 degrees Celsius, which is 1.5 degrees above the 1981-2010 to average. It was another wet month for many, with 184% of average rain for the UK overall, and more than twice the average for parts of the country. There was a general division in sunshine across the country, with central, south and east England sunnier than average, while the north of England and south and west Scotland were duller than average, resulting in near-average sunshine for the UK overall at 108%. So where were the hottest, coldest, wettest and windiest places in February? A maximum temperature of 14.9 degrees Celsius was recorded at Kew Gardens, St James Park and Heathrow, all in Greater London, on the 24th. A minimum temperature of minus 7.7 degrees Celsius was recorded at Altnahara, Sutherland, on the 17th. In the 24 hours ending at 0900 GMT on the 24th, 68.8 millimetres of rain fell at Clooney Inn Highland. A wind gust of 109 miles per hour was recorded at Needles Old Battery, Isle of Wight, on the 14th. A snow depth of 20 centimetres was measured at Tulloch Bridge, Perthshire, at 0900 GMT on the 12th. The month opened with a continuation of the unsettled weather from the end of January, with a deep area of low pressure over Ireland bringing widespread high winds to the UK and a wind gust of 84 miles per hour was recorded at Aberdaron in Gwynedd. The second and third saw some showers, particularly in the north and west, but there was a good deal of dry weather and sunny spells, particularly in central and eastern parts. But another deep low brought damaging high winds to South Wales and South West England on 4th and 5th. St Mary's Airport on the Isle of Scilly recorded a gust of 92 miles per hour. Huge waves overtopped coastal flood defences and many coastal communities in Cornwall, Devon and Dorset experienced coastal flooding and damage to infrastructure, buildings and sea defences. This included severe damage to the main line railway at Dawlish. The next major storm system came through on the 8th to 9th February with a peak gust of 92 miles per hour at Needles Isle Battery, Isle of Wight and further rain exacerbating flooding in parts of the country. The storm on the 12th to 13th was arguably the most severe of the sequence, particularly for coastal areas of Wales and northwest England, resulting in a Met Office red warning for wind being issued. The maximum gust speed was 108 miles per hour at Aberdare and Gwynedd. The winds combined with high tides and tidal surges, and more than 15 severe flood warnings were in place for the coasts of southern England, the Somerset Levels, and the Thames Valley. The 14th to 15th February saw the last of the major storms affecting the UK this winter, but disruption and flooding continued in some areas such as the Thames Valley, where water levels remained very high. The remainder of February saw a return to more normal, unsettled winter weather. Here are some of your February weather pictures you sent in. Send in your pictures of March weather through Twitter, and you could feature in next month's summary video. For more information, go to metoffice.gov.uk forward slash climate.